Today we're going to make a quick little information display so you can monitor things like your game's FPS. What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. As your game starts to get bigger and more complex, you may be worried about things like if your game will be able to maintain 60 FPS, or maybe how much memory it's consuming. So we're going to access these stats through code and then output those stats to our game screen so that we can monitor our game's performance while we're playing. First, we add a canvas layer to our main scene. I like to then add a margin container to give me a nice buffer away from the edge of the screen. Here I have set the margin container layout to full rect, and then set the margin values to 10 pixels each. You can then add an HBox container as a child of the margin container, and then a VBox container as a child of the HBox container. I set the VBox container alignment to end. Inside of the VBox container, we will add two labels for the two stats that we are going to monitor. I simply rename those labels to STAT1 and STAT2. We give the two labels some placeholder text just for now so that we can see where they're placed on the screen. Next we add a script to the margin container. Since all we need here is the physics process, we get rid of the other stuff and add the function for the physics process where we're going to end up putting the code that we need to use. We access the labels and set the labels text property to be the output of our desired stats. To get the FPS, we use the performance.getMonitor method to access the performance.time underscore FPS stat. Similarly, to get the memory usage, we're going to go ahead and access the performance.memory underscore static stat. Here you will also see that I use the string method, or you see that str method, to turn the output of the performance get monitor method from a float to a string, so that we could use it with the label. For the memory static stat, I also divided twice by 1024 to convert the byte value to megabytes, and then I use the round method to round the result to the nearest integer just to make things look cleaner. And here's another look at the code. When we run our game now, we have our stats there for us to see and monitor while we play test our game. There's nothing much to see here as our stats are not fluctuating enough to matter. But just for fun, I went ahead and broke my game so that I could get the FPS to drop, which you can see here. You can see the FPS drop here according to our labels, and the FPS drop should probably also be pretty visible in the gameplay. If you like today's video, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on what's coming up next. Also, the sprite source code and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available for download on my Patreon page, so if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link is in the description. Thanks to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.